Well, good afternoon. I was in the house just a couple minutes ago, and a scripture had come into my head. And um, I thought the scripture was in the book of Galatians, and I had went and looked, and I didn't see it. So I pulled it up on my phone, and... Uh, found that it was in the book of James, and the thought had just come into my mind of the need of talking about this particular verse. Now, it's easy for me to look at someone else and look at what they do wrong, and it's easy for me to look around at them rather than look down at myself. So what I did is I found the verse to make sure that it was the verse that I was wanting. And instead of analyzing it up front, I waited to analyze it when I turned the camera on. Because a message really should speak to me first. It really should cause me to think before it causes someone else to think. But the verse is in the book of James, chapter number five. He's closing out the uh, James. I'm not exactly sure. I uh, just want to check one thing. Um, according to this, James is the author. Um, but I want you to hear the verse. And there might be more, but this is the only verse that came to my mind. I'm in verse 16. James chapter 5, verse 16. This is a pretty popular verse. It's a lot harder verse to live personally than it is to be looking at somebody else. It says here, in this verse, it says here, confess your faults one to another. Confess your faults one to another. You know, there's a lot of things I could confess. Um, my prayer life is a fault that I know I have. Um, um, my attitude sometimes, I guess, is a fault that I can confess. Uh, the Bible said to confess your faults one to another. Um, there are so many ways that I feel that I'm I'm guilty. I mean, there's, like I said, I didn't analyze this verse before I found the verse, and I made sure it was the right verse, but then I thought, well, let me, let this verse stump me. And, you know, I'll be honest with you, it's not easy. It says, confess your faults one to another. Can my... Can one of my faults be patience? Sure. Do I have a need of patience? Yeah, just like everybody else does. See, it's easier to look around than look down. Um, I've used that all my adult life. It's easier to look around than look down. It's a lot easier for my eyes to look at that one over there's problem rather than to look at my own. See, the writer here is saying confess faults one to another, but then the Bible, you have to look at the words that is added by the translator. That word your is added by the translator because it's in italicized words. Confess faults one to another. The translator says, confess your faults 
one with another. I think I like that. I like the translation of that word right there. Confess your faults. See, it's a lot easier to look at other people's faults. And that might be the reason that I'm making the video, but I'm getting somewhere with this verse. Just be patient with me, if you would. And then it says, and pray for one another. Now, I'll be, I'm, I'm just going to be totally honest, because that's the only way I know how to be. There's a lot of times that my prayer life sucks. I, I'm just being honest. I'm not trying to have y'all to say, oh, boy, poor Kenny is admitting to his fault. Yeah, because the Bible says confess your faults one to another. And then it says, and pray for one another. I don't pray enough. I guess in a way, I'm the type that wants to see things happen without me doing a whole lot of praying. But I've come to realize that I can pray for people, but people's got to pray for their self. Now, when it says to pray for one another, you first of all have to know the Lord Jesus. You have to be in right standing with the Lord. The word righteousness in the Bible means to be in right standing. Me and my wife need to be in right standing to be able to have a good relationship or a decent relationship, we have to be on the same wavelength. She can't be way up here and I'm way down there and, and I can't be way up here and she's way down there. No, the Bible says to pray one for the other. You know, there's a lot of times that I feel like that when I pray, I don't see the, I don't see the effectiveness of it. Now, I will pray whenever I do a message. I didn't today because I turned the camera on too quick. But most of the time, I always try to say, Lord, bless the words to the words that I'm going to say. Well, you know, I want the Lord to let me confess my faults one to another. I mean, there's a lot of things I will confess to. I'm sure my wife could fill you in on a whole pile of things that is a fault. But see, if she's only looking at mine and she's not looking at hers, then that's not being fair. If she's only willing to see my faults, then on the same hand, I could be looking at her faults. And it would be easy for me to examine other people's faults because it's just easier for the eyes to look at the other person rather than to look at me. Where I'm looking at right now, I'm looking in the camera with my eye right now, it's a lot easier to look at that one over there than to look at me right here. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. Now, a lot of times we wait to the last resort to pray. And I think that's one of the reasons why that I believe I'm out here making this because there's a lot of times that when we ask for prayer, you know, and it might just be me and y'all forgive me if it is, and maybe I'm the only one guilty of it. But you know, when I see people ask for something and they'll say, um, uh, most people will answer back saying prayers. I've seen my wife do that. Somebody would request something and she would put on their prayers. Well, there's been a many a time that I would see the word prayers, but I would always, or try to, I would always say the prayer over Facebook. I would take the time to print out my words and type out my words so that it just wouldn't be 
I'm I, I'm praying, but we never do. I mean, I might be the only one guilty of it, but I mean, I'll see where a lot of people will go when someone asks for prayers. They'll put on their prayers. Do they really pray? Take somebody that's in the hospital. Do they really pray? Or do we just want them to get better? Or I think we want them to get better, but do we really pray? Well, I'm getting somewhere, like I said a minute ago, I'm getting somewhere with this here message. It starts out, confess your faults. I have to confess my inconsistencies. I've got to confess the part that I believe is standing in the way with me and God. I can't go and pray for someone when I need prayer myself. My prayer is not going to do a whole lot to help that person. If there's something that I'm not seeing, that I'm not praying for, then it's like, it's a lot like a dirty glass. And I don't have one in here that is a dirty glass, but a dirty glass that has got filth in the glass You can have the very best water that you could have to go into that glass, but that glass is still dirty. Now, I've got enough sense to realize that if a dirty glass has got good water in it and a person needs prayer, is God going to honor the prayer of the person that has a good prayer, but they're living a dirty life? Sometimes I want to think that we are guilty of wanting to try to dress up ourselves when we're in a real need, in a real situation. We want to dress up our prayer, but yet our dirty glass is filthy. Now, God, I believe, is the one that gave me this message, so I don't want nobody to complain about it. But, you know, the truth is the truth. You know, I know a lot of people that will go and say, would y'all pray for this one here? And would you pray for that one there? And I realize that. And I've got somebody in my mind right now, but I can't say their name because I don't want to offend nobody. But here's the way I look at it. If the shoe fits, it should be war. If the shoe fits. And... You can't give something to God if he, if you haven't never given yourself to God. If yourself has not learned the ability of worship, then you can't really go and be convicted about helping somebody else when you yourself is that dirty glass trying to offer a prayer just because you want to see them get better, but yet you're willing to sort of stay in that dirty glass. And that's the part that it's talking about. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. And it goes on to say that ye may be healed. Now you notice what it said right there. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. Listen now, that ye may be healed. Not talking about the person that's got the problem. It's saying that ye may be healed, meaning the person that is doing the praying. So what does that mean? That means that if, say, take this person right here that is praying, that the Bible says, confess your faults one to another, I've done that, and pray one for another. Okay, that's praying for that person over there that has asked for that request or somebody has wanted that request to be made. And then it says that ye may be healed that ye, the one that's doing the praying, may be healed. So does God want the person that's doing the praying to be healed? But many times we'll want to say a prayer for that one over there and leave us in the dirty glass and be the filthy glass 
Now, I'm not reading that wrong. I just saw that, and I thank God for me seeing this, even with feeble eyes, that ye may be healed. It's not talking about the person that you're praying for. It's talking about you that is doing the praying. But yet we like the switch of religion. We'll turn on religion when we think that we need a prayer asked. We'll turn that switch of religion on. And then when we get what we want and the Lord begins to show favor to that person, then we'll go back and live in our filthy glass. And that's what's wrong with a lot of people today is people are trying to pray. They don't realize that ye may be healed. That word healed means complete. Does it actually always mean a healing of the body or a healing of the mind or the healing of the spirit? No, it says that ye may be healed, meaning that there's a lot of people that are praying for other people, but they're not healed themselves. Because that's what it says. But here's the reason that I believe the Lord put this verse on my heart. Listen to this now. Now, this don't slap you in the face with conviction. I don't know what will. The effectual. The effectual. You know what the effectual is? I've got effectual in running that light up there. My light is running because I have power that comes into this little room. And that bulb is running because there's a live electricity wire that is feeding that light to have that light on in front of my face. The Bible says here, the effectual fervent. Fervent means that the prayer comes from a glass that is cleaned out. A glass that is not filthy. Why is it that we don't see God working all that much today? I can tell you why. Because God sees that our vessel is still nasty and filthy and dirty, but yet we're praying that God will miraculously heal somebody over there when our healing needs to take place first. But we don't care about our healing because we love being in that nasty, dirty glass. But yet we want God to work on our behalf. So the verse says the effectual, the working prayer, the prayer of righteousness, the prayer of holiness, the prayer of praying from a, from a, from a clean glass. That's what I get out of this verse right here. The effectual fervent. Meaning, but when, you know, when my, me and my grandson talk here lately, he's been telling me at the end of the conversation, I love you. And I tell him back, I love you. When my wife calls me on the phone, I think she does it by habit, but she will say, love you. Call it what you want, but is it fervent? Does it, is it meaningful? It says the effectual fervent prayer. Many people don't really see the need. I'll give you a great example. I had a woman yesterday that wanted me to pray for her son. And she asked every single time we do nursing home service, she will mention her family and her sister by name every single time that I show up for church service. I know her prayer request because I've heard it 50 times over. But she mentions her son and mentions her sister and myself. That's the order in how she mentions it. She wants you to pray for her, her sons that they need help. She mentions her sister, not by name, but she mentions her sister, and then she says, and myself. 
You know what I want to think? That is a picture of a fervent prayer because she's consistent. A lot of times we'll live in our dirty glass and think that God is just going to do us a big fat favor. But what happens if he sees that we're not born again, that we're not saved, but yet we want God to some do some miracle for that one over there when our glass is filthy and downright nasty. And you know what? This message ought to slap every one of us in the face, including myself. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. Righteous means right standing with God. The prayer, the fervent prayer, the effectual. Why did, why did the writer add the word effectual? Because it means more. It would be like me telling somebody that I really love you and really mean it. And really mean it. Not just a, a bunch of slang words, but really mean what it says to be effectual. Does God want our prayers to be effectual? I think that when I pray for someone and I find out that somebody needs something, that's the reason I spell out the prayer is because I'm not trying to do it because I want to be better than that one over there. I'm not doing it so that I can be a show off so that I know what the words to say. No, I want to do more than just say, okay, I'll pray for you and then never do it. Never do it. It's not that big a deal. You know, we do it in church, but we don't do it now because, you know, God's going to do what he wants to do. So we'll just take the attitude that God's going to work. You know what? God is going to work. I can tell you right now, there's people I need to pray for in the effectual fervent prayer, not just a prayer, but in the effectual fervent prayer. I believe the Lord is obviously looking at my dirty glass. Maybe that's what the Lord is trying to show me. Hey, you're up there talking about everybody else. What about your dirty glass? That's what it said up there. Confess your faults one to another. Is my dirty glass filthy and before God? Is God going to hear my prayers when I've got a dirty glass? He says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You want a prayer that's going to move God? Clean up your own glass because it said right there that ye may be healed meaning the one that is praying it's not talking about the one that you're praying for confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed i think there's a message in that right there and the effectual Fervent prayer. This light is working. This light is no longer working. That light is not effectual. I can still see my face. But that power right there made that light to work. God wants to see our prayers work. If we're going to take the time to pray for somebody, wouldn't it be nice to be able to have a clean glass to be able to say, Lord, help that person over there. Would it, would he be more apt to help if my glass was clean rather than it being filthy? The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You got to ask yourself, what kind of prayers are you praying? What kind of glass are you praying from? Is your glass nasty? Is it filthy? Is it dirty? Are you trying to serve the world on one hand and serve God on the other hand? God don't have to hear that prayer. If you're praying out of a dirty glass, God don't have to hear that prayer. Elderly ministry is how you get a hold of me. Leave me a message on that website. Get the phone number there. Call me. Let me know how I can help. I'll be more than glad to be able to help. You can also reach me by faith by uh, YouTube. You can get on YouTube and download me and get my information. 
Thank y'all for tolerating me again.